things like 20 second sleeps and 10 second disarms and you know things that were just really really obnoxious. Um, we, unfortunately, breaking up BRD is really super tricky because it's so actually tightly integrated. There's no like clean places to make a break from a geometry standpoint on the art side. So what I did do is put in some teleporters. <laughs> So it's similar to like what you see in Old War, right? You beat this boss and you get access to this teleporter. Yeah, um, there's a teleporter at the entrance. There's a teleporter past the bar. There's a, t a teleporter that's over in the city somewhere. I forget exactly. Where You're it, actually going to see some of that in the Cataclysm dungeons too. There's a few teleporters. Yeah, I mean we've added we've added teleporters to Shadowfang. If you die on the last boss in Shadowfang, that's a horrible run. Yeah. So we added teleporters there. Teleporters to Dead Mines. Um, we actually gone through, you'll see in like the next, if, if you haven't seen it already, you'll see in the next um, beta iteration that we've added to a lot of cataclysm ones as well. Basically, we're, and something else that we've done that we haven't really talked about is the graveyards are super close now. Yeah. We actually recently went back and said I like. Think there's no graveyard further than 30 seconds away, I yeah, think, from any dungeon entrance. So. In a lot of cases, we put the graveyard for a dungeon right outside the portal. Yeah. Right, because. When we started, you know, we're like, hey, Dead Minds is awesome now. It's really, really cool. I died. Wait, how do I yeah. get back? Yeah. Whoops. There's nothing really fun about that dead run no. back. I get <laughs> lost trying to get through the micro in front of the Dead Minds portals. It's so, yeah, we're, we're moving the graveyards, everything. We want you playing the game, doing the encounters, not running so much. Um, hi. Um, okay, as a raid leader, a lot of times, or even just as a pug goer, or just as a raider in general, um, uh, a lot of times um, people um, want to join raids, or for instance, like say for instance a raid fills up way too fast, and you're like, oh man, I really just at least want to check this out, and like be involved with my either the guild or the pug, so um, have you guys ever considered a maybe raid observation slash queue system? So say for instance you had like 30 people or 31 people, and the rest of the uh, people above the 25 cap, for instance, in this case, um, would be able to um, stay with like the the main tank or some object, so they couldn't, you know, fly ahead or check out the other area, like you know, spectating and Counter Strike or something. But um, and then as soon as they one one person drops, the next main tank in line on that queue would be pop right in there. So then that way you wouldn't have to like summon them or deal anything. They could just be right included in the raid, um, watching the whole, all the fights, you know, learning it with the rest of the guild and uh, being involved with the guild or the pug. For the whole process, it sounds like a cool. We don't have that planned currently, but it sounds like a cool idea. I think something that comes up a lot of times is people want to see sort of like the looking for dungeon system, but for raids, also for a way that you can get someone in. Like you lose somebody and you can get someone in again real quick. Um, it's just that's a very difficult thing to do from the design end, just because raid encounters are a whole different beast than dungeon encounters. So it's kind of hard just to throw someone right into it and try to have them not have a bad experience because they might have never done that. And then you think about the other 24 people and they're like, where did this tank come from? You know, he just queued in out of nowhere. So it's definitely something that we've talked about a number of times. Um, I just don't think we have a great solution for that yet. Yeah, but, but observation mode would be a really cool thing. Yeah. Uh, I, agree, I agree with that. That's, just, that's a pretty huge feature and we'll have to see. We'll talk about that more and find out when, when it looks like we could do something like that. Hi. So I'm concerned about um, encounter, like, uh, uh, encounter mechanics, uh, particularly in terms of like more hard stuff. Like I, I'm a heroic raider kind of stuff. So I'm concerned about more like five mans and, hero and uh, heroics and raids and such. In terms of mechanics, I'm really interested in like really cool mechanics. Things uh, uh, like like the the kind of cool stuff in, in some of the raids. Um, my main concern is in terms of that there's this sort of like uh, the, the binary kind of thing where uh, certain, mechan or, uh, certain in, uh, uh, mechanics are either the kind of big flashy thing that you just cannot ignore and it kills you instantaneously or on the other side it's something that's really subtle or something that isn't necessarily very obvious but it won't kill you immediately, it'll just kill you if you're an idiot and you don't move out of the fire. So my concern is more like, is there any middle ground there? A lot of the times it's the kind of thing where it's just either you're stupid or you weren't paying attention. That kind of an idea. Yeah, we talk about that quite a lot. Awesome. And it's actually a 
pretty nasty design problem. Um, especially if you're, if you're, let's say you're, the tank and the healers, they know they've got a whole lot of things on, on their plate, but let's say you're a DPS player and you don't get out of the fire. If it kills you, you understood what, what happened. You didn't get out of the fire. If you're just taking like a little bit of damage, eh, you probably blame the healer. That's just the way it sort of works out. So we're actually uh, really like thinking like how to communicate properly to um, DPS and, and the healers and tanks as well. Like, hey, this is why you're dying. It's not just because, oh, the healer ran out of mana. It's because the healer ran out of mana because they had to heal this person and this person because they screwed this other thing up. Trying to put the dots together um, is a pretty complicated thing. And we're, we're trying to come up with ways to make that a whole lot easier, you know, better ways to sell mechanics, better ways to... We try to make things more visual. You know, yeah. so hopefully you're not having to look at a buff that's stacking at a counter. You know, one of the new features for Cataclysm you're going to see is um, we actually have meters that can, that the, the dungeon guys can actually custom script individual meters. So take, for example, like Insanity on Cthulhu. Instead of having that be a stacking buff with a number, you'd actually get a visual meter just like you'd see across the screen. And that meter can grow and go back and forth. And we have a number of different ways to implement that into the game. Yeah. That's just like one example of a way we can try to make an, uh, some sort of mechanic be a little bit more visual and hopefully kind of meet that middle ground. Yeah, the, the blind dragon that, we, that we've been talking about, how you want to be as quiet as possible, how loud you are is actually represented on one of these types of meters, like just called the sound bar. And you can actually see like, oh, I'm like 20% full, 40% full, 60% full, uh-oh, I'm 100%, and he's nuking the, ever, the crap out of me right now. I just screwed up. Um, we want to keep making more detailed and cool encounters, right? But you kind of hit a, a wall at a certain point that it gets so complicated that you have to explain it for 15 minutes before you can get into it. But as we're getting more tech, I think we're, you're really seeing the encounters grow in a way that's, that's a little bit more visual, but they're still getting cooler. All right. How you guys doing? Uh, basically, my question is, this expansion, you guys have done legendaries the way I'd prefer it. The entire guild pretty much works together to get it crafted. You have multiple weeks, months to actually get it made. Now, that also has a problem of players leaving the guild with the legendary. Is there any plan to possibly make these legendary weapons uh, guild-bound? <laughs> it's a good question. That's not something we're currently looking into. We have put in guild achievements that the whole guild will get as a whole when you get a legendary. But we definitely, I mean, we currently don't have any plans to take a legendary and make it so that anyone in the guild would be able to use it. It's an idea that came up, actually, early on in the guild system, is that instead of having a legendary be bound to the single person, it would be bound to the guild. Um, a number of issues show up there that you don't initially think about, like what if someone has that legendary in their inventory and they leave the guild, what do we do? Um, what if someone has it, how do you find out who in the guild has it? Like then do we have to create a, a, a legendary UI for the guild to kind of see oh, who has the legendary right now? Um, and when we kind of dove down into it, our feeling was that it, it was kind of a little bit more complicated than what it was worth for what you got out of it. Um, that's why we're kind of looking to the guild system to help people feel like they're able to, because what you're kind of getting at there is you want everyone to work together as a group, right, and all reap the benefits of something. And I think that's exactly what you're going to see with the new guild system stuff. There's rewards, perks, spells, abilities, you know, all kinds of things that you can get that the whole guild gets to share in, not just one person. Um, but to your exact question specifically, for the time being in the future, most likely legendaries will still be for one individual person. We have enough time for about one or two more questions. Mm, that was good. That's right. <laughs> All right. I just figured I would ask about a uh, common fear of many 25-man raiding uh, guilds. Uh, it's very common knowledge that a lot of people don't necessarily agree with their 10-man structure idea, but um, they do fear the reward system for actually doing 25-man raids. One of the things they worry about is it looks like on what I saw on your live raids that were already shown 
that it's about five epics per boss in a 25 man and two epics per boss in a 10 man. That's the same ratio of loot per person. But what I remember hearing was that it was originally supposed to have more loot per person for a 25 man raid. Is that something that we're looking at? We actually still do award more justice points in a 25 person raid than you get in a 10 person raid. So, but you're talking about with the loot individually, but you end up buying the items that you want with justice points, and so those end up getting more in those individual raids than you do in a 10 man. You have it. Yeah. Um, basically, I'm getting, looking for some clarification. Um, let's say yesterday you started a new um, instance and you downed two bosses. And then the next day you join a fresh raid. And can you join that instance to begin with or do they need to kill those two bosses first? You're saying you killed those two bosses? Right, with like a pug or something and then you yeah. join a guild raid tomorrow. The way it works is you can only ever kill those bosses one time. So if you join another raid, let's say is if they've killed those two bosses, then you can join them right away. But you wouldn't be able to join a raid if those bosses were up because you've already killed them at that point. Right. Yeah. That's all the time we have today. Please, let's give a round of applause for our panelists. Thanks, everyone.